Today we celebrate the 33rd Sunday of the year. This Mass is being offered for the following intentions. Thanksgiving Mass offered by Rohil Desmond and family. Thanksgiving Mass offered by Kumar Alok and Renuka and family. Thanksgiving Mass on the birthday of Sarita and Ashwin offered by Maxwell and family. Thanksgiving Mass offered by Maria Freni and family. Thanksgiving Mass on the 30th wedding anniversary of Eric and Sophia de Souza, offered by family. Thanksgiving Mass offered by Mother La Mary and family. For the special intention offered by Sancia de Souza. For the repose of the souls of Thomas, offered by George. For the all departed souls in the families of Gloria Rasu and Roy Rasu. For the repose of the soul of Gaspar Fernandez, offered by Lawrence Fernandez and family. For the souls of Chinnapa, Teresa, Robert and Lucy, offered by Violet and family. For the repose of the soul of Yolanda Brett, offered by Abraham Aletheia. For the repose of the soul of Peter Pereira, offered by Priscilla. For the all the departed souls in the families of Eric and Sophia de Souza, for all the departed souls in the family of Maria Freni. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, a Sunday before entering into the Advent, the readings of today speaks about the kind of preparation we should undergo before entering into kingdom. The gospel, the other speaks about the gifts and talents that we have received from the grace of God must be put to use in order to attain the kingdom of God. It is not quite easy job to do, but by the grace everything is possible. That is what St. Paul says. The grace is sufficient for me. Your grace is sufficient for me to do anything to attain the kingdom. So enough of grace is showered upon us so that we will be able to utilize the gifts, the time, the opportunities, the relationship that we have in our life in order to gain God's kingdom. There are times we have failed to acknowledge these facts and for this moment, for those moments where we fail miserably to understand 
the means and ways of attaining the god's kingdom let us feel sorry for and ask god's mercy and pardon in order to take part in this holy eucharist in a worthy manner i confess to almighty god and to you my brothers and sisters that i have greatly sinned in my thoughts in my words in what i have done and what i have failed to do through my fall through my fall through my most grievous faults therefore i ask bless mary of a virgin all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the lord our god may almighty god have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting amen
let us pray grant us we pray o lord our god the constant gladness of being devoted to you for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the order of all the days good through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen the first reading a reading from the book of proverbs chapter 31 verses 10 to 13 verses 19 to 20 and verses 30 to 31 this concluding passage from the book of proverb sings the praises of a perfect wife an excellent wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels the heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain she does him good and not harm all the days of her life she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands she puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle she opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy charm is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman who fears the lord is to be praised give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates the word of the lord thanks be to god responsorial psalm your response shall be blessed are all who fear the lord blessed are all who fear the lord blessed are all who fear the lord and walk in his ways by the labor of your hands you shall eat you will be blessed and prosper your response blessed are all who fear the lord your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house your children like shoots of the olive around your table your response blessed, blessed are all who fear, fear the lord indeed thus shall be blessed the man who fears the lord may the lord bless you from sion may you see jerusalem prosper all the days of your life your response blessed, blessed are all who fear, fear the lord, lord. the second reading a reading from the first letter of saint paul to the thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 to 6 paul invites his christians to be alert so that they may be ready to meet the lord when he comes a reading from the first letter of saint paul to the thessalonians concerning the times and the seasons brothers you have no need to have anything written to you for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the lord will come like a thief in the night while people are saying there is peace and security then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape but you are not in darkness brothers for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of light children of the day we are not of the night or of the darkness so then let us not sleep as others do but let us keep awake and be sober the word of the lord thanks, thanks be, be to god, god. 
kindly rise for the acclamation. Alleluia, Alleluia. Abide in me and I in you, says the Lord. Whoever abides in me bears much fruit. Alleluia. Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 13. At that time, Jesus told his disciples this parable. It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, a good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, I will set you of much. He entered into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents, here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So he was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will, who has, will be given more, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cause the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we have come across this parable many times. The kind of interpretation we heard 
vary time from time. Today I would like to focus on the third servant who failed miserably in his duty that master entrusted with him. To look into the response of the first two servants, they come, came forward and speak to the master with grateful heart and joyful heart. And the message they gave to the master was pleasing to him that he rewarded them with much more. Imagine if the third servant did not speak any word to the master and entrust that one talent to him. What would have been the response of the master? Maybe there wouldn't be any punishment at all. We do not know. But since he spoke, Master, I knew who you are. A hard-hearted man. The first thing he knew about the master is a hard-hearted man. And the second thing he spoke to the master about himself is, you, sow, you reap where you have not sown. And you gather where you have not scattered. See, the, these three qualities he attributed to his master. What would have been the response of the master? What would be the mindset of the master after hearing these three statements about himself? So the gospel writers would uh, interpret in this way these, these three attributes. The first one, hard-hearted, would be the tyrant king who never had mercy on his people. And the second two points he would attribute to the thief. Thief is a person we know they will be longing to steal things from others. They do, they do not have any concern whether they need these things, but they just go about and take away everything, whatever they want. See, these two persons' character he attributes to his master. That means, in his view, the master is a kind of a king who is so terrible, who is tyrant, and he doesn't have any mercy at all to his workers, to his servants. And the other thing is like a thief. Here where the master finds a charge against him. Well then, at least if you would have given that one talent without saying any comment about the master, master would have been at least, okay, fine. You have given me what I have gave you. No problem at all. But now I judge you by your words. You know, I am a tyrant king. I have no mercy. You know, I collect things where I have not scattered. But now I have given my money to you. I have scattered my things, my grace, grace upon grace on you. Then what did you do with that grace? What did you do with that money? What did you do with that talent? I am a person where I can reap without sowing. In that case, I have already sowed, sown in your heart, sown in your hand. Then I should be expecting much more than what you're supposed to give to me, right? So he takes a charge against him by his own words. Because his words are very rash about his master. Then he says, you will never ever taste the joy of the master. See, first two masters, he promises, come and join the joy of the master. But the third one, thrown into the darkness, outer darkness. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us assume that through this message, we are exactly like the third servant. We know who we are. We know who is our master, what is his quality, what is his character, what is his 
nature, etc. But we also know the demand and needs of the person, the master, who has this nature. But we fail like the third servant to fulfill the needs and demands of the person which ha who has this kind of hard nature. But God doesn't have the hard nature. He is so merciful that he has given his only son for our redemption. We know the fact. But still, we failed in our duties to fulfill his desire. What is his demand after all? The demand is to follow, to listen to him and to follow blindly. That's it. Abraham did, right? Abraham did what God has given to him. Everything blindly he followed and did. And God considered it as a righteousness to Abraham. God rewarded Abraham with multiple of blessings, the choices of blessings. He said, whoever you bless, they will be blessed. The so blessings he received from God is the blessings of the entire creation. Such a great blessings he received because he blindly followed God. Let's come to our understanding of the talents and gifts. We always interpret God has given a lot of talents, lot of gifts, lot of properties, lot of good relationships, a time for each other, everything. How far do we use to promote the kingdom of God or to attain the kingdom of God? Do we think God needs much more than just spending our time, valuable time with him and with the people who are in need? No. He accepts exactly the time. He doesn't need anything. He just wants, like Mary, to just sit at his foot and listen to him carefully. That's what he needs, nothing more than that. Once uh, I was talking to a priest, he shared his experience with a parishioner. Maybe parishioner or friends, I, I do not know, but he shared his view, his understanding about the people, how far they understood the religion, their faith, and the importance they gave to God. He went for a house blessing. And in the house blessing, before the prayer started, the family members requested the father, Father, please cut short your prayers. We can have a prayer for five minutes. Enough, Father. It's already time. Time for what? You have called a priest for a blessing of the house, a blessing of the family. That is the time that you meant for. And the people started saying, you please pray, uh, you are, uh, restrict your time for prayer, five minutes, five to ten minutes, because it's already late, we are waiting for a dinner. So this is what we undergo, we do in reality. It happened. After my ordination, what had happened, I was quite uh, surprised to say, a pastor was invited. I invited a pastor who is a friend of mine, He's just uh, maybe one or two years older than myself. He came for the ordination. And he was observing all the ceremonies, all the Eucharistic celebration, everything he observed and he was there. And the next day he was with me. My Thanksgiving must be over. After the mass, everyone was gathered at home. I was so tired. I couldn't do anything at all. I was restless. So I thought it would be better to take rest for hours, maybe two hours, something like that. And the pastor, he called the family members, everyone, to come in front of the house. He, what he said, let us give thanks to God for the graces he has showered upon him through his ordination. And we do not have the practice of 
praying like the Protestants in the other churches, one hour, hours and hours at home. But he called my family members, including me, to spend time in prayer and prayer of worship, singing, praising God for one hour, 15 minutes at the entrance of my house. That is what God wants of us. See, when we pray, we don't want to spend much more time in prayer when we call a priest. Or a priest himself sometimes doesn't want. He himself will say, yes, it's already running short of time. Let's finish prayer for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It may happen. But God says, you just blindly sit in under my foot and listen to me what I am saying. That is what I want. All your talents are useless unless you spend all these talents and times and everything opportunities for the glory of God. That is what St. Mark in his Gospel 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be added unto you. See, whatever you need, whatever you demand of God, whatever you ask of God, everything will be given to you. But before that, you come and sit in the presence of God and spend your time with Him. That's what God says. We know the Master's nature. We know the demands of Master. But still, we like a third servant, miserably fail in our duties to fulfill by using our talents and gifts. God has given more than sufficient grace. What are we using these graces for? Do we use these graces to promote the kingdom of God? Or do we use these graces only for the selfish motives, motives of ours? Mostly we do the second thing. Whatever is satisfying our needs, we use our gifts and talents. We just forget about God. We just forget about the people in need. God has given us a command. He says, I command you, you must love one another. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, I command you, you love one another. It is not a request. It is not a message he has given to the people. It is an order he gave. There is no excuse, no escape from this order. If you follow this order, you will be my disciples. Look how concretely he gave the statement. You must love one another. See, God's love imbibes in human love. If you love God, if you listen to God's word, if you listen to his message, definitely you will be able to listen to the people who are in need. This is how we have to use our gifts, our times, our talents to attain the kingdom of God. We cannot be just neglecting, ignoring the message of God, the invitation He has given to us to strongly respond to His call, call of kingdom of God. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ponder over this because next week, only next week is left. Afterwards, we will be following the Advent. Advent is again a preparation to receive the Lord. So we don't have to wait till the beginning of the Advent. Let us ponder over the message that has given to us. How far we are using our graces. There is already enough of grace. How far we are using these graces in a successful manner to pro promote the kingdom of God or to attain that kingdom in our life. Amen. Let's all stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made. 
for us, for us men, men and, and for, for our, our salvation. He came, he came down, down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our, for our sake he was, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, like a good thief who at the end of his life stole the kingdom of heaven by acknowledging the nature of God. So let us also acknowledge that God is merciful. He is able to do anything for us. In this trust and faith, let us put forth our petitions to him. Your response is, Lord, make our lives fruitful. Lord, Lord make, make our, our lives fruitful. fruitful. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that as leaders in the church, they may encourage the faithful to use their gifts and talents to the best of their ability. We pray. Lord, Lord make, make our, our lives fruitful. fruitful. For all the women that the work they do at home, at their workplaces, and in their parishes may be appreciated and rewarded. We pray. Lord, Lord make, make our, our lives, lives fruitful. That women may not be exploited in any way. That they may not become victims of abuse and not be made victims of physical and emotional violence. We pray. Lord, make our lives fruitful. That all human beings created in the image and likeness of God, who is the perfect worker, that each of them may put to good use the gifts and talents received from God. We pray. Lord, make, make our, our lives fruitful. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that enlightened by the word of God, we may become like the servants who are able to multiply them, thus having brought joy to the Master. We pray. Lord, Lord make, make our, our lives fruitful. fruitful. Let us pray for our local and personal needs for a while. Almighty, our living Father, we thank and praise you for the gift of life, for the gift of faith, for the gift of fear of God. By using our faith, we may be able to serve you. By using our gifts of fear of God, we will respond to you pos positively that we are always under your foot to listen to you. Lord, you said, ask, it will be given to you. We have been asking various needs of our community with the same faith that you will grant us all our needs. Be merciful to us, Lord, and help us to ponder more about attaining the kingdom of God through the scripture, through the Eucharist, and through the ministries of the church. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Jesus, I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. Live. I surrender. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept, accept the, sacrifice the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery your faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death Therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Peter Machado, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever amen at the savior's command and form by divine teaching we are to say our father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name thy, thy kingdom come thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior Jesus Christ for the, for the kingdom, kingdom the, the power and the, the glory are yours now, now and, and forever. forever Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other the sign of peace
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go for the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to Our Lady of the Sacred Heart. Remember, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, the great things the Lord has done for you. He chose you for his mother. He wanted you close to his cross. He gives you a share in his glory. He listens to your prayer. Offer him our prayers of praise and thanksgiving. Present our petitions to him. Altogether, let us live like you in the love of your Son, so that his kingdom may come. Lead us to the source of living water that flows from his heart, spreading over the world hope and salvation, justice and peace. 
See our trust in you. Answer our prayer. Show yourself always our mother. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.